So if you like to build hot rods and muscle cars, it's a good time to be an enthusiast because uh, technology is allowing more and more tools that used to be professional level only uh, to be used by home enthusiasts, right? Uh, and Nick, you just tried out Eastwood's new TIG welder yes. that's uh, kind of basically designed to be a, a unit to be used at home by maybe an entry level guy. What would you think of this piece? Um, the TIG welder actually performed really well once I got all the dials set in. Okay, so let's talk about TIG welding. What's the, the concept here? What, what happens? Uh, it just creates an arc between the tungsten and the steel or the whatever metal you're using and it heats it up and creates a puddle and then you add a little bit of a filler rod in there to create a nice bead-like design. So TIG welding is different from like a wire feed welder because you gotta control everything. Yeah, it's kinda like rubbing your belly and tapping your head. You kinda have to get everything going to make the uh, weld look nice. All right, so you mentioned some knobs and adjustments on the Eastwood welder. What, what's on the front of this thing? There's amperage uh, dials, there's uh, gas flow, post flow. And what is the difference between the, the gas flow, the pre-flow, post flow, what does it mean? The pre-flow is as soon as you hit the thing, it kicks it on for a split second before you start uh, TIG welding uh, so that there's a area of gas so that there's no uh, foreign matters getting into the metal to contaminate it. And post flow is to keep that area clean while it's cooling um, so that no all the contaminations can get out and it doesn't uh, introduce anything into the top of the weld. Okay, so I'm gathering it's got to be clean to be a good TIG weld. Yeah, there can't be any paint or uh, any kinds of oil or anything. It's got to be a pretty clean with a slight roughness to it. Okay, so it looks like you welded a couple things. Um, how did it do on the stainless tubing? The stainless tubing actually went pretty well. Some of the spots I could weld without any kind of filler, and some of them I tried the filler, and it made a nice bead also. And did you have any issues with burning it through, or, or you know, what are the challenges? With each material, you got to figure out what amperage the puddle starts at and what amperage it burns through at and keep it in between there so that you uh, create a perfect bead without getting it too hot to where it just falls all the way through. And how do you personally control the heat? There's two ways. The first option is the foot pedal. And the second one, there's a trigger operator on the TIG torch. The torch uh, handle, it's one setting. You hit it and it goes all the way up. With the foot, you can actually pedal your amperage to the steel. So it looks like you did some mild steel also. How did that weld in comparison? The mild steel was about the same um, as the stainless. It's just a different kind of filler material. Was there any advantage to using a TIG on thinner sheet metal? With the TIG, it has a smaller heat affected zone, so it keeps warpage down. Cool. So when I first started over here, I kind of concentrated on my pool and what happened was I got a nice even slope where this uh, filler rod doesn't catch anything. So that tells me that's a good weld. Over in here, I kind of sped up a little bit to see how it would react. And it kind of catches a little bit there, which means I didn't have enough filler material. Over here, I sped up a lot. The filler is actually concaved, so it actually uh, catches a lot, which means I did, was going way too fast and I didn't have enough filler material. When I slowed down over here though, it acted like when I first started out. It was a nice clean weld and there's no catches or no burrs. Well, the thing that a lot of people ask about with TIG welders is aluminum, which is uh, kind of tricky to do at home without one of these. So how did it do on aluminum? The aluminum went actually pretty well. Uh, the only thing you gotta change is put it on AC and uh, different kind of filler material. but. It pretty much welds the same, it just takes a little bit more effort. Tell me about the uh, process of welding aluminum and how it went. Seeing that you can't see it change color. Um, the aluminum, you kind of got to listen to it more. It's got the higher pitch, so once you get the sound down with a good bead, you can be pretty effective. So uh, after using this, what do you think? I mean, I think you can get one of these delivered to your house for less than a grand. Yeah, the performance is uh, really nice and it gives a really good weld uh, for beginners. It's really easy to use. Well, that's important. So you can learn more about the, uh, the new Eastwood TIG welder at their website at eastwood.com.